With so many different exercises and muscle groups to be trained, it can be confusing to figure out what exercises you should use in your workouts. One option is to include an isolation exercise for every single muscle group, but then you will quickly find out that your workouts become very long because there are lots of muscle groups to be trained. A different and better way to approach it is to include mostly major compound movements into your training. I often get the question, if I only had to choose 5 exercises to train the entire body, what would it be? Well, in today's video I will answer that question in more detail. I will go over what I consider to be the top 5 compound movements for training your full body. Once I have discussed these exercises, I will also explain how you can build a complete workout program around these 5 compound movements. But first, let's look into the difference between compound and isolation exercises. Let's say you want to train your biceps. You can isolate the biceps through a single joint movement like bicep curls. The only thing you are training with this exercise is elbow flexion. But if you have a full body workout with 5 to 6 exercises and you have more than 10 muscle groups to train, then you can't isolate every single muscle group. So instead, you can also choose to train something like a lat pulldown which will train both elbow flexion and vertical shoulder adduction, so it will target both your biceps and back muscles. Interestingly enough, there has been some research done comparing the effects of lat pulldowns and bicep curls on biceps muscle growth, and the muscle growth response was found to be similar. So by using more compound exercises in your training, you're able to have more efficient training sessions while still being able to effectively stimulate the major muscle groups of your body. But this is not to say that you shouldn't do any isolation exercises. There definitely still is value in doing isolation movements like bicep curls and side raises. But as I will explain later in this video, these exercises should be seen as the cherry on top. Your compound movements form the foundation of your training program. With isolation movements, you can place more emphasis on certain muscle groups that you may want to bring up. Now let's get to the compound exercises and we start with an exercise that targets the legs region, and that is doing barbell back squats. The emphasis with this exercise is placed on your quadriceps, but also your glutes and adductors get trained hard during the barbell back squat. There are more squat variations that you can use. For instance, next to doing barbell back squats, you can also do something like a barbell front squat. With a front squat, the weight is in front of your body and you maintain a more upright posture. We know from research that this reduces the stress on your low back. So if a barbell back squat results in more low back discomfort for you, then it is worth experimenting with a front squat. Now, about how deep you should squat, you may have heard before that with a squat your hip crease should be below the knees. This is a good rule of thumb for most people. But we all have differences in biomechanics, it is not possible to recommend one specific squat depth for everyone because our anatomical structures can differ from person to person. So squat as deep as comfortably possible. If you feel like your squat depth is limited, incorporate ankle wall stretches in your squat warm-up routine or squat with elevated heels to help increase your squatting depth. Next, we have another big compound movement and that is the barbell bench press. This exercise trains a horizontal push, this stimulates your chest, triceps and front deltoids. To maintain good tension on your chest and not overly stress the shoulders, it is recommended to keep your elbows more slightly tucked during the bench press. As I have shown in one of my previous videos on the bench press, you want to keep a sort of J-curve bar path in which you bring the bar towards your lower chest and then push it back up. Next to the barbell bench, we of course also have different bench press variations that we can use. For instance, the dumbbell bench press is another solid variation. With a dumbbell bench press, each arm is lifting its own weight individually. So if you want to work on reducing muscle imbalances between each side of your body, then doing a dumbbell bench press makes sense. It's of course also possible to incorporate both barbell and dumbbell bench variations in your routine, which is what I like to do. Next up, it's time to train a compound pulling movement to train your back and biceps. And because I limited myself to only 5 exercises in this video, I had to choose between a horizontal and vertical pull variation. And since we got deadlifts coming up as one of the next exercises, I have decided to make a vertical pull our primary back and biceps exercise. Because some of the benefits of a horizontal pull like increased spinal erectors and trap stimulation can to some extent also be obtained with a deadlift. Now back to the vertical pull. With a vertical pull exercise like lat pulldowns, you're able to effectively train your back and biceps. The back muscles work together in this exercise, but depending on how you perform the lat pulldown, you are able to place more emphasis on certain regions of your back. To focus more on your upper back muscles, doing a wide grip lat pulldown is helpful since this will help engage muscles like the rhomboids and mid traps more. Whereas if you want to focus more on the lats, a narrow or shoulder width grip helps you engage the lats region more. An alternative to lat pulldowns is doing pull-ups. If you can do pull-ups, this is an excellent way you can train your back with the use of minimal equipment. The fourth compound movement is another foundational exercise and that is doing a deadlift variation. The most basic form of a deadlift is the conventional deadlift. And this is a solid variation that targets a mixture of leg muscles like your quadriceps, glutes and hamstrings. 
but also your core plays a primary role during deadlifts. Your spinal erectors and your abdominal muscles stabilize your spine during this movement. Typically speaking, doing heavy squats and conventional deadlifts in one workout can be considered too taxing. So if I had to choose a deadlift variation to pair with your barbell back squats, then it would be a Romanian deadlift. Your squats would be focused more on the quadriceps, while the Romanian deadlift is focused more on the hamstrings. And both exercises target the glutes, so then your legs are challenged in a balanced way. With the Romanian deadlift, you keep your knees stationary and lower the weight down by pushing your hips back. So unlike a conventional deadlift, you don't have to lower the weight all the way to the floor. With a deadlift, it is even more important to leave your ego out of the movement. The deadlift is one of those exercises in which it seems like you can always go a bit heavier if you really want to. But before heavily overloading a deadlift, focus on mastering your technique first. So if we look at what we've been able to train so far, our squats and deadlifts have covered the legs region and also stimulated your core. With the bench press and leg pull down, we have also targeted the back, chest and your arms to some extent. The only muscle group for which we really haven't trained the compound movement yet is the shoulders. This is why the fifth and last compound movement is the overhead press. This focuses on your shoulders and triceps. While with the bench press you do target the front delts to some extent and your rear delts get trained with the lat pull down as well, the shoulders can benefit from more stimulation via a dedicated shoulder press. If you do a standing barbell shoulder press then your core will get a good amount of stimulation too. But it's also possible to do a dumbbell shoulder press if you want to work on reducing any existing muscle imbalances on each side. So now we have covered the 5 compound exercises, and as mentioned, if you incorporate these movements into your routine, you will be in a great spot to target the major muscle groups of your body. But that's not to say that you should only limit yourself to these exercises. Because even though we have been able to target all major muscle groups, there still are some smaller muscles or maybe some regions that you want to focus on more in your training. For instance, if you want to bring up your calves, the compound exercises mentioned won't be enough. Incorporating a calf raise exercise in your routine will be needed. Also, if you want to get round and develop deltoids, you can benefit from isolating your side delts via side delt raises. Because the side deltoids don't get as much stimulation as the front and rear deltoids do in push and pull movements. And lastly, if you want to bring up your arms, incorporating some biceps and triceps work is helpful too. So essentially, see the 5 compound exercises discussed in this video as the foundation of your workout routine. Build your training program around them. If you're not sure exactly how to build a training program around these 5 exercises, you know I got you covered. The free 3 day full body routine that I gave away on my channel a while back incorporates these 5 exercises into the workout program but also contains some isolation movements to target the smaller muscle groups of your body as well. See the link in my description for more details. And that was all for today's video. I hope you now have a better understanding of how you can use compact movements to build an efficient and balanced training program. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also, leave me a thumbs up if you found this video helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And I will see you in the next video.